Hello, Summoners, and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and today I'll be giving you guys our 13.11 patch preview. It can be easy to get baited into thinking that a buff is something automatically good, and a nerf means something is instantly bad. Sometimes they're just perfectly balanced. But that's not always the case. So, how are you supposed to tell what's what? Well, that's what I'm here for. After getting the opinions from some of the best analysts and league players around, I'm here to tell you what actually matters with this patch. And if you like what you see in this video, make sure you check out ProGuides.com. We're working on guides like this for every single champion, adding on to our already huge list of over 500 master courses put together by top level pros and streamers. A pro account only costs $9.99 a month, and since we now build monthly, you can cancel anytime you want. That's already a crazy good deal, but to sweeten it even more, we decided that we're going to be doing an RP giveaway for subs as well. Every single patch, we're offering up a nice little bag of 11,525 RP. Entering just takes three quick easy steps. Click the link in the description, sign up for the pro membership, and comment your pro guide's username in the comment section below. You won't find a better deal anywhere, so what are you waiting for? Go pro now. All right, let's get on with this guide. We'll get started by going over some system changes first, since these are pretty broad and are generally going to affect the meta a lot more than champ specific changes do. Last patch's item changes really shook things up big time. So we're obviously going to be seeing some adjustments to bring things a bit more in line. That said, not all these changes make a ton of sense. For example, let's talk about Duskblade. This item being buffed is kind of crazy. It may not be the best on every assassin, but it's not meant to be. For example, Zed has under a 51% win rate with it, while Yumu's is at about a 52.5%. That definitely doesn't sound like something that needs help. The issue lies with the champions that are already doing well with it. It's just a bit weaker than Yumu's for Kha'Zix, who is arguably the best jungler in the game at the moment. With Ryan somehow forgetting to nerf him this patch, he's just going to be a monster. He's also been an insanely strong mythic for Hecarim. Everyone is going Yumu's because it's pretty easy to see the synergy with both the haunt passive and the movement speed active on him. However, Duskblade has a crazy high win rate on him, pushing 56%. The untarget ability that you get with it now does so much for Glass Cannon Hecarim, allowing you to teamfight a lot easier than before. TLDR, Duskblade buffs are kind of crazy and will make some snowbally junglers even more snowbally. I think it may be some hidden tech on Lee this patch. Other buffs aren't quite as broken, but still definitely are relevant. Popping Kraken Slayer's damage and magic hasn't really been great on most ADCs. You buy it to kill tanks, but you aren't building magic pen on most marksmen. It's really only super effective on the ones that build Ginzus. By swapping into physical damage, it'll be much more rewarding in the late game if you have LDR or Mortal Reminder. Moonstone Renewer's small revamp was a really neat idea, but with Echoes of Helia just being as broken as its predecessor, Athene's Unholy Grail, it hasn't really had much room to shine. Getting a bit of a buff to its late game healing should help curb the difference in power a bit. Navori Quick Blades is an OP item on the right champions, but the way its stats are laid out, it's not a great rush. Reducing your cooldowns doesn't feel that great when you aren't hitting hard. By swapping some of its haste for more AD, you'll have much better time trading. It should feel pretty good as a first item on champions like Zaya and Sivir now. The last buff that we have is to Static Shiv. Everyone was hyped for this item to come back, but it's shockingly <laughs> not been very good. Part of the issue probably comes from having a lot of AP ratio on it, so the base damage isn't very great. Buffing both the base damage and minion multiplier means that it should make a bit more sense to pick it up when you need a wave clear, but won't be building the AP to make it effect on regular ADCs. Alright, now let's take a look at the items getting nerfed. As it stands, Ardent Sensor scales way too well. 30% extra attack speed in the late game is a lot to be giving out, especially on champions that can apply it to multiple allies. Making it a flat 20% at all levels should make it good, but not be the end-all be-all for every single enchanter. Like I said earlier, Echo's Affiliate has just been busted, especially since it even applies off of Font of Life, so you can build it on champions like Ash and Syrah and get value out of it. It definitely needs a nerf, but I am so glad that Riot isn't insta-gutting it like two weeks after its release. It'll be a very strong option for anyone that can reliably keep generating stacks. Personally speaking, Runins is one of my favorite items in League of Legends, even before the item rework, I was a huge fan. That being said, I can definitely admit that it deserves a nerf to its on-hit damage. It's nice to see Gale Force getting a nerf, but honestly, I wish it was a bit more harsh. Gale Force shouldn't be doing much damage at all. It should exist as a third summoner for immobile ADCs to get out of bad spots. Honestly, make it a 5 minute cooldown dash that can go for walls, 
remove the damage, and make it a legendary item. Make it a truly defensive utility item. Yumu's Ghost Blade has been overperforming big time, with it leaking over to even some ADCs, so no one is surprised that it's being hit in three different ways. I don't think it'll be overtaken by Dusk Blade on every single champion, but hopefully this is enough to push champions like MF back to their intended items. Lethality builds just don't tend to be too healthy when marksmen pick it up. Lastly, Storm Razor is another item that has been doing way too well. It's been the best first item on the majority of ADCs. The movement speed it gives is just way too valuable, and it does so much damage. It's not like you're sacrificing anything to pick it up. Nerfing both its AD and Energized proc will probably push it to being a second or third item. Alright, with all of that stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the direct changes to champions, starting with the buffs. Akali. Seeing Akali struggle in Silo Q shouldn't really be a surprise, and I don't think 10 damage to her Q is going to fix it. The champ is just too heavily balanced around pro play, and the average Silo Q player just doesn't tend to bring out what the champ has to offer. When behind, she is useless. When ahead, you need perfect execution, and even then, you probably will get better results with higher tier champions. Azir is another champion that has typically been balanced so much around pro play that he's been borderline unviable in the past, but thanks to the Shurima shuffle they gave back to his kid on 13.5, he's not so bad at all. In fact, even right now, he's sitting at almost an even win-loss. The buffs that he's getting this patch should definitely make him pretty strong. He definitely has a bit of a learning curve to him, but the seasoned Azir player should be able to carry pretty hard. Ivern. Ivern is getting his mid-scope update this patch. While none of the individual changes are huge, added up, I think he's going to be doing pretty well. Bear in mind, people are probably still getting used to Ivern with all the new items. With all these buffs, he may even get pushed into the upper tiers once people get used to him. He still freaks me out though because he's like 90% legs. Kalista. A really interesting list of changes is the Kalista buff. Again, another champion that is super prevalent in pro play, and therefore usually nerfed to the ground and impossible to use in solo queue, but I don't know. These changes look really good for her. Making it so autos don't miss when you lose vision is huge for trading in lane, as this is a big cooldown reduction on her E in the first few levels. The AD ratio for autos being put back in the standard 100% obviously means more damage early on, so you can abuse her kill lane potential. But more importantly, it also means better scaling. One of Kalissa's biggest issues is that she tends to fall off harder in the late game. Now, when you do well early, you'll snowball even harder and be able to push leads more to win later on. Now, I know I sound like I'm really trying hard to sell her, and I do think Kalissa will be pretty strong, but that's mostly in high elo and pro play. She's probably still going to be a champion that isn't super great in the middle and lower ranks, however, at least she'll be more viable now. And you probably can say the same thing about Rek'Sai. The lower in elo you go, the more games get dragged out. It's pretty common to see games go so long that people start getting full build, or at least close to it. And that's pretty much the worst case scenario for Rek'Sai. But in high elo, people are a lot better at closing out games once ahead. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of games where people go ape mode and throw huge leads. But generally speaking, people have a much better idea of how to end the game cleanly. So I think these buffs for Rek'Sai are super nice, but won't matter for the most of the latter. Rannington. Rennington is supposed to be a huge lane bully, able to shut down his opponent hard early on, then snowball to carry in the mid game. If the game goes too late, he falls off quite a bit, but ideally you want to end before that. The problem is, in his current state for the better part of the last couple of seasons, Rennington has been so weak that he just loses most lane matchups. If you can't win lane, you can't be a big threat in the game. He's not very tanky, nor does he have any utility, so you lose out both as a side laner and as a team fighter. The changes that he's getting this patch don't really help too much, you know, being able to close the gap just a little bit more often won't mean much, but a lower ult cooldown is nice, if it was rank 1. To really put him back in a viable spot and a reliable one, they should be buffing his base stats or his Q. The last buff we have is to Twisted Fate. This is a pretty simple one, flattening out his W's cooldown to 6 seconds instead of scaling down from 8 to 6 depending on what rank you have it at. Since you max Q first, this will help out the laning phase a ton. Whether you're going aggressive or playing defensive, having less yellow card downtime is huge. It also means that you have a much easier time hard shoving waves with red cards. Two seconds may not seem like it matters all that much, but like I mentioned to my girlfriend, two seconds is, is, is quite a long time. Anyway, here are the champions being nerfed. Aurelian Soul. Another patch, another Aurelian Soul nerf. I kinda hate this. Red is just slapping them on one after another. He's still gonna be a pretty good champion with some crazy scaling. It's not like his win rate is that obscene anymore. Can't they just leave him be? Amumu. Amumu's also gonna be on the chopping block. This one is a bit more deserved, seeing that he's almost at a 55% win rate in Plat Plus, but it's also not a very big nerf. He'll likely still be a top tier pick. Aphilios. 
Plenty of ADCs are doing well with the item changes, and for the first time in forever, Aphelios is almost 50% win rate in Plat Plus. And that of course means that he must be immediately nerfed. This direct nerf along with the nerfs to both Gale Force and Stormraiser means that he's right back down to the bottom of the barrel. Jinx. On the other hand of the spectrum, Jinx definitely needs a nerf. She's been Omega S here for way too long. This one may not kill her entirely, but it'll definitely help stop her from being such a reliable hyper carry, even when behind. Rel. Finishing things off, we have the Rel mid scope update. This one is a much bigger changeup than the one that we're seeing for Ivern. Riot's goals with this update are to make Rel feel way less one dimensional. At the moment, Rel's entire life is to hit W or be useless. Now, there will be much more going on. She's also going to become useful when dismounted. Again, current Rel is really all about landing W to set up the rest of your combo. Now she'll actually be a strong fighter when she's off the horse. Other than that, there are just some general quality of life things going on. All in all, there's so much being changed, it's hard to say how good exactly Rel is going to be. But it's certain that she's going to be a lot more flexible now. Instead of only having a place as a counterpick to heavy enemy CC, while being completely useless against double range bot lanes, you can actually blind her and get away with it. And that about wraps things up for our 13.11 patch preview. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to see more from us, head over to ProGuides.com. We have tons of other content and courses by pros like CoreJJ, DoubleLift, and General Sniper for you to access. And now we're even working on pushing out guides for every single champion. All of that for just $9.99. And that's not all. If you prefer a more one-on-one -on -one approach, our team of coaches are the best that you'll find anywhere on the market, and with the Pro Guide sub, you'll even get a discounted rate with them. Trust me, the amount of time that you'll save by booking a session with them is so, so worth it. You'll accelerate your climb by months once you apply everything that they have to teach you. And of course, there's that sweet, sweet RP giveaway. Again, the link for that is in the site in the description box below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I can't wait to see y'all in the next time, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.